Let's have a look at our last question. The question says the boiling points of different organic compounds are given below. All right, so they've given me four sets of organic compounds with different boiling points. Okay, if we have a look then at the question, it says define boiling point. Well, we've done that already today. So remember, it's the temperature at which the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Write down the name of the functional group of these compounds. So guys, looking at this table, I notice that we are working with COOH, COOH the whole time. So your functional group here is the carboxylic group. It's not carboxylic acids, all right? So it's not carboxylic acids, it is the carboxyl group. All right, so the name of the functional group is just the carboxyl group. And there we go. The IUPAC name of compound C. So let's just go back to compound C. So compound C, I see, has got one, two, three carbons in the chain. So three carbons refers to propanoic acid. So my acid is just going to be propanoic acid. And there we go. So propanoic acid we write as two words. Third question says, structural formula of the functional isomer of compound B. Structural isomer of compound B. Now, compound B is ethanoic acid. So, not sure if you guys are aware of it, but our carboxylic acids, carboxylic acids, as well as our esters, of functional isomers of one another. So they gave me ethanoic acid, all right? So I've got ethanoic acid. That is what they gave me. And they're asking me for a functional isomer of that. So obviously it's going to be the ester and they want the structural formula of this functional isomer. So they want me to draw out the ester. So now what ester, if I have a look at this Ethanoic acid has got a formula of C2H4O2. So now I've got to draw out an ester with C2H4O2. So it means I've got two carbons in the ester. So the one carbon had to come from the alcohol and the other carbon had to come from the carboxylic acid, which means then I had to have been working with methyl methanoate. So I need to draw out the structure for methyl methanoate. All right, so let's have a look. So we're going to have a carbon. We're going to have three hydrogens attached to it. We're going to have this bridge between the alcohol and the carboxylic acid. And we've got my carboxylic acid there. And so we've got a C double bond O. So this is representing the carboxylic acid part. And this over here is representing the alcohol. So there's my structural isomer for my compound B and it's called methyl methanoate. Okay, so there we've got it. Let me just use this one. All right, so let's look at the next question. The next one says, which one of the compounds, A, B, or C, will have the highest vapor pressure? Refer to the data in the table to give a reason for your answer. Now, this is very similar to the previous questions, okay? So vapor pressure means they will have the weakest intermolecular forces. Now, as you go down a group of carboxylic acids, obviously, we're going to have more London forces, more dipole-dipole forces, and we obviously still have hydrogen bonding. So there will be two sites for hydrogen bonding. So that stays constant throughout. So as you're going down the group, each of those carboxylic acids will have two hydrogen bonds. But now the chain length is getting longer. So now it just means we're going to have more sites where London forces can occur. And as a result, those boiling points are going to be higher because now as we've got more London forces, we're going to need more energy to overcome those forces, therefore a higher boiling point. Therefore, it's going to be opposite to the vapor pressure. So the weakest intermolecular forces will have the highest vapor pressure. So which of those molecules is the smallest? It's compound A, so it will have the highest vapor pressure because it's going to have the weakest intermolecular forces. So it's going to have less London forces and therefore it will have then a lower boiling point or 
compared to the others and therefore a higher vapor pressure. All right, so let's just put that down into words. So the compound here we're looking for is compound A. And the reason for that, you can just say it's going to have the weakest intermolecular forces of all of them. So we need to compare them all together. So it's going to have the weakest intermolecular forces. And as a result, it's going to have, so if you wanted to, you could actually refer to the London forces. Obviously, there'll be dipole dipole as well. I'm just abbreviating it. And we've got one site for hydrogen bonding. But now you're going to have less. Sorry, it's carboxylic acid, so it'll be two sites for hydrogen bonds. And therefore, as a result, it's going to have the highest vapor pressure because you need less energy. Oh, let's just do this nicely. I'm like a crab today when I'm with my writing. So highest vapor pressure because I'm going to have or I need less energy to overcome the weaker forces. All right, so you can do that in a nice explanation and a full on explanation. All right, let us have a look at the next question. So the next question says, it was showing me a table, I've got compounds B and X, and I see compound B is my ethanoic acid, and I see compound X is a 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, so it's propanol, so I see I've got propanol over here, and I've got a carboxylic acid, and here I've got ethanoic acid. So they're comparing ethanoic acid now to propanol. And they say the boiling points are different. So they say the boiling point of compound B is now compared to compound X. Besides the conditions used to determine boiling points, give a reason why this is a fair comparison. So guys, when they're asking why this could be a fair comparison, and if you're not 100% sure, always go work out the molecular mass. All right, and if you find that the molecular mass is more or less the same, then you can go with that. So remember, if you want to compare something, we need to make sure that there is only one factor changing at a time, and we need to keep everything else constant. Otherwise, it won't be a fair test or a valid test. So we just need to make sure that we're only changing one factor at a time. So let us have a look at the molecular mass of each of these. All right, so the molecular mass of B, so I'm just going to say molecular mass of B is equal to, so carbon is 12 plus 3 times 1 for hydrogen plus another 12 plus there are two oxygens plus 1. All right, so let us have a look what that will add up to. So this is going to add up to 12 plus 3 is 15. So 15 plus 12, plus 32, plus 1 is plus 33. So in total here, we are looking at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 3, 4, 5, 6. So hopefully I've done my calculations properly. So this is going to be 60. Oh, let me just redo that. So this is going to be 60 grams per mole. You will now go and work out the molecular mass of compound X. Okay, and we're going to add them all together. So if we add them together, we're going to have one, two, three carbons plus how many hydrogens? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Don't forget that one on the oxygen. So there are eight hydrogens plus one oxygen. And if we add that together, so it's going to be 36 plus eight plus 16. And if we do that, Okay, we should get, I'm um, hoping that it will also be equal to 60 grams per mole. All right, so we can see from that that the molecular mass is going to be the same. So therefore that won't be a factor and that is being kept constant as well. All right, so let us see. It says, besides the conditions used to determine boiling points, give a reason why this is a fair comparison, because the molecular mass is constant. All right, so it's not changing, so it's not going to influence my um, results for this experiment, so the molecular mass is constant. Okay, the boiling point of compound B is now compared with that of compound X. 
Is compound X a primary, secondary or tertiary alcohol? Give a reason for your answer. So if we have a look at compound B, it is if a compound B was ethanoic acid and compound X we said was propanol. And if we have a look at the structural formula, so we've got three carbons and on the third carbon we have the OH. Now because this hydroxyl group is only attached to one carbon, this is going to be a primary alcohol. All right, so that's a primary alcohol and the reason for that is that it is attached to one other, or the carbons only attached to one other carbon in the carbon chain and that is why it's a primary alcohol. The boiling point of compound B is now compared with that of compound X. Explain fully the difference between the boiling points by referring to the types of intermolecular forces present in each. Alright, so if we have a look at the alcohol, so once again we know the alcohol has one site for hydrogen bonding plus London plus dipole-dipole forces. And the carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid has two sites for hydrogen bonding plus London plus dipole-dipole. So therefore, which one is going to have the higher boiling point or melting point? It doesn't matter what the question's asking, but it's referring to boiling point here. Which of these is going to have a higher boiling point? It's going to be the carboxylic acid. And the reason for that, the difference, is because of carboxylic acids having two sites where hydrogen bonding can occur, where alcohols only have one site for hydrogen bonding. All right, so always remember with these questions, you have to refer to the hydrogen bonds, especially carboxylic acids, just learn off by heart, has two sites where hydrogen bonding can occur, alcohols only have one, therefore carboxylic acids will always have or need more energy to overcome the stronger hydrogen forces and therefore it will have a higher boiling point than the alcohol. All right. <music>